Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm going to show you my round 3 game from the finals of the Croatian Cup where I faced the French defense. My favorite opening when I have white and I play e4. There's nothing more enjoyable than playing against the French, in my opinion. If you're a French defense player, I, I think you're slightly masochistic. Uh, if you're an e4 player, I hope this video helps to well, improve your results. So in any case, I went to e4, my opponent played the French. d4, d5, and I played knight d2. I usually play the Tarash French when I face the pr French. I think it's the most comfortable variation. And that's what Karpov used to play, so I basically copied his repertoire against the French when I was starting. Knight of 6 is the main line. e5, knight f d7, and bishop d3. White's idea is to keep control over d4 with knight g2 and then the, the d2 knight comes to f3, you're going to play c3, and d4 is going to be completely reinforced. As opposed to the Vinover or the classical where the knight is on c3, it's much easier to hold on to d4 in, the, in these positions. c5, c3. So at some point in the French, black has to play c5 and f6 in most cases to break open the position. So you can see that it's useful to have the d4 pawn overprotected. Knight c6, knight e2, these are all still the main lines. And in this position, my opponent played queen b6. That's not necessary. He could have taken on d4 or played f6. cd4 is the most common move. After queen b6, I have to defend the pawn, or the best way to play is to defend the pawn, so knight f3. Okay, now we get these exchanges, cd, cd, f6. And this is all mainline stuff in the queen b6 variation. As a rule, when your opponent played f6, you take it. Okay, you, you, you take it. Okay, so takes, they take with the knight. And now the main strategic team of the French for black is to play e5 and liberate the bad French defense bishop. So we are going to be playing against that. And the next couple of moves are my opponent trying to play e5 or prepare e5 and me trying to disrupt that. So I castled, and he played bishop d6, of course, reinforcing e5. Knight c3, playing against e5, because in many cases this pawn will be hanging. But more importantly, I want to play bishop g5, and I don't want to lose the b2 pawn. So knight c3 is a tactical move that prepares to develop the bishop and prevents queen b2, because the queen is trapped. So I, I know this position, and I knew it at the time. I knew this trick of developing the bishop without hanging the pawn, so knight c3 is what I normally play. My opponent castled. I went through e one which is a slightly rare move. About 50 tournament games by master players, but I like it a lot. It's very concrete, and it asks black to, to find a plan. I mean, what do you do here? My opponent played bishop d7, which is understandable, and it's the main move, because there isn't much else to do. And now I played bishop g5. My opponent went into a bit of a thing, but I don't think he seriously considered queen b2. Uh, if queen b2, then black just loses knight a, knight a4 and black resigns. Uh, the queen has a3 and b4. It doesn't matter where the queen goes. The setup for white is going to be a bishop on d2 controlling b4 and the rook on e3 threatening bishop h7 winning the queen. So for example, if queen b4 straight away, Bishop to d2, queen a3 is the only move, rook e3 resigns. That's it. It, it. it doesn't matter what you do. You can move your king to h8 to prevent bishop h7 from being checked, but you still lose your queen. Or alternatively, if a knight a4, queen a3 immediately, then we just chase the queen to b4. So bishop c1, queen b4, bishop d2, queen a3, rook e3, same idea, we win the queen, the game is over. So on bishop g5, my opponent cannot take. He played rook a8. Uh, I know king h8 in this position. King h8 is the most common move. Uh, I did not know this position. So here I was on my own. I played queen d2, which is okay. The engine says it's equal after queen d2. It wants to go knight e5. But I couldn't figure everything out because after knight e5, the d pawn may actually be hanging in some positions and there are more squares for the black queen. So after queen b2, uh, knight b5 now uh, is the engine recommendation and bishop e5. And after d5, the engine plays knight g4 for black, says white is slightly better. Everything's hanging. So, for example, queen g4, knight e5, black has a double attack here, I just won the knight here. Uh, 
and the engine move is bishop takes h7 this is just too much i i I never considered knight e5. It seems like a very unnatural move to me. But okay, it's the best move. I played queen d2, which is normal. This is a famous trick in the French. Even if uh, black got a third attacker on the pawn, or now they have a second, you cannot take the pawn because takes, takes, queen takes, bishop h7. This I hope you know this. So here, my opponent could have punished queen d2 with apparently knight g4, and they should be equal. And after something like rook a d1, h6, bishop h4, it should be equal. He played knight h5. And that's also fine, it's just not the best move. Rook a d1, my opponent played bishop f4. Now I would like to invite you to pause the video and figure this out. So the first move is easy, but the follow-up isn't. You have to you have to calculate everything precisely. So queen c2, the first move easy knight b4 doesn't work because you take on h7 with check bishop f4 doesn't work because you take on h7 with check in my opinion nothing worked and that's true white is winning after queen c2 however i did not figure out all the variations correctly after queen c2 so my opponent played the move i was expecting h6 and it's probably the best move and now i blundered my winning advantage into an equal position. What I should have done, well, there were two candidate moves. Uh, first of all, bishop h7 check and king h8 is something you should insert as white regardless of how you continue. And my original intention was to go bishop g6 and I'm forking bishop and rook, oh, uh, sorry, knight and rook. So let's say bishop g5, knight g5, hg5, bishop takes h5, rook e7, Queen d2. Seems good. I don't know. I mean, how do you defend g5? It's a big advantage for white. The best way to play, though, after bishop h7, king h8, is completely crushing. And this, I'm sad to say, I saw, I saw the idea, but I couldn't make it work. And that's much worse than not seeing the idea, in my opinion. So knight h4. And the idea is, of course, knight h6 takes, takes. And I was afraid of knight d4 but everything is a double attack everything is a double attack and i can simply sacrifice the exchange so takes queen takes knight g6 king takes is forced knight f8 king somewhere is forced and knight takes d7 uh, should be game over i mean if you turn on the engine it says about plus two plus three so after bishop takes it's two knights for a rook or sorry uh, it's no, no, actually, the, the material is equal. What? Wait, have I miscounted this? Two minor pieces, rook, queen? Oh, yeah, I'm actually a pawn down. Sorry about that. I'm a pawn down, but there's a lot going on here. I can go queen g6, for example. If the knight is saved, uh, then the rook is hanging. If you play knight f6, saving both the knight and the rook, then knight takes f6, followed by queen takes rook. So... I, I didn't see all of this. I saw the idea I couldn't make it work, unfortunately. But I blundered. I played bishop takes f4, which makes no sense. And I was thinking, well, I'm going to go for the same idea with bishop h7 and, and all of that. But unfortunately, when knight takes f4, then the knight's covering g6. And it can take on d3. So I don't know what I was thinking. So this is equal. I should play knight a4 here chasing the queen away and the queen goes to c7 i blundered again i played a move that loses the game instantly so i went from plus three to about minus five in two moves i went a3 i simply wanted to prevent knight b4 unfortunately the very thematic rook takes f3 which i had discarded due to it being illegal actually works here because black can play knight h3 check and I didn't even consider this. Luckily for me, neither did my opponent. If I take, then rook takes. And I'm busted. So all the pieces are coming in. I'm going to lose everything. And if I play king h1 instead, then rook takes f3 anyway. Uh, gf3, knight takes d4. And once again, I'm completely busted. This is minus 6. Luckily for me, after a3, my opponent took on d3. I played queen d3. 
And here I figured, well, maybe he can take on b2, but it's going to be interesting because I take on b7. Or I play knight a4. So he didn't take, and I don't think he should. Whether he takes or not, it's still equal. He played queen d8, which is okay. And this is actually the position I was very happy to get because it's a thematic French backwards pawn position. In the French defense, when you play f6 and c5, you have this bad structure where there's a hole on e5 for white to exploit. So I played knight e5, took I took with the rook, and it's going to be very hard to activate the stupid d7 bishop, this French defense bishop, and also to defend e6 at the same time. So at this point, I was really happy and I was very confident I was going to win this game. Okay, I mean, that m might be too confident, but I, I, I think this is very hard for black to play. Queen h4, queen e3, rook c8, f3, no tricks, rook c6, queen f2. I wanted a queen trade because why not? My opponent exchanged, king e3, and now I just have a weakness to work with and I can slowly put pressure on my opponent's position. King f7, king d3, rook b6, rook d2, rook b3, king e2, a bit of shuffling, and b5. And this is the losing mistake. b5 traps black's rook. Uh, I played the second best move. The engine line here is completely crazy. And if you find this idea in, in your game, then you're a genius and you're probably a grandmaster. So the main best move is rook e3. And let's say b4. You play knight b5. And the rook is trapped and you're going to do this. You're going to take everything. So rook e3 is forced. And you don't take the rook, you play knight d6 king e7, knight c4, again this rook is trapped, so when you take, I take and I win. This is a crazy idea I didn't even consider. What I did consider though is knight a2, rook e1, knight c1, and I couldn't see a way for, for black to defend, so I went knight a2. My opponent went b4, if they don't go b4, let's say I random of g5, then I just go rook e1 and, and the rook is trapped, knight c1 is the next move. So my opponent gave up a pawn, which is understandable. I think I would have done the same thing, because I don't see how to save the rook. The engine wants to play b4, and that's probably the only way to save the rook. So that distracts the knight for a move. Knight takes b4, and after a5, knight a6, the rook now has a way out. So at this point, I was sure I was going to win, because I'm a pawn up, I have a better position, my knight's going to sit on c5, seems perfect. King f6, rook e1, bishop c8, knight c5, the rook has to move, rook e3, controlling the third rank, rook c1, rook e1, I don't want my opponent's rook on my back rank, so move away, king e3, e5. And before playing king e3, I of course had to calculate e5, because that undermines my knight and attacks the d4 pawn, but fortunately I have a rook on e1, so when I take d5, that's check. And then when I move my king, that's another check. So my knight actually isn't hanging. d5 check, king e5, and king f2. Of course, not king d3 because of rook d4. Uh, king f6, the knight moves away. Very, very safe, very, very clean position. You just have to convert d4, g4. Bishop g6, knight f4. Slowly improving, putting pressure on d4 g5 knight e2 d4 is gonna fall so d3 knight c3 now d3 is gonna fall rook b3 king e3 rook takes e4 was played it's very hard to suggest anything else i mean i'm just gonna take with king d3 not king d3 hanging the exchange but prepare that and then take so rook e4 knight e4 king e5 knight c5 threatening the rook threatening the pawn and now i win another pawn knight takes d3 uh, I was actually expecting my opponent to resign, but it's good that he didn't. You're gonna see why. Rook c2, bishop g6. Rook c6, I just was playing almost automatically. And I should mention one more thing. If you've seen my previous game, it was 105 moves. And this was a double round day. So I'd already played 6 hours of chess in the morning. And rounds in the afternoon started at around 4 p.m. And this is move 56. So at this point, I'd been playing chess for about 11 hours and I couldn't see anything. I'd missed lunch. Okay, we were in a hotel 
during the finals of the Croatian Cup. I'd missed lunch and now I was going to miss dinner. So I was really upset and hungry and almost blind. So I, I just wanted the game to finish. B3, King f6. Knight f2, Bishop f7, Knight e4 check. King e7, Knight d2, Bishop d5, King d4. Okay, good king, good rook, two extra pawns. My opponent plays King e6 and after rook e3, uh, it's it's just a winning position because it forces exchanges. So rook e3, the bishop is going to hang. King d6 is the only move. And now knight e4, forcing bishop takes knight. Absolutely, because if king c7, then I take the bishop. If king e6, then I check the king away and, and win the bishop. Uh, or win, uh, win the bishop with uh, knight c3 check, king somewhere, knight takes bishop. So he has to take, I take with the king, king c5. And I'm not even going to ask you to guess my next move because it made no sense. But I played king d3, losing the pawn with check and going into an almost drawn position. Practically speaking, easier for white to play and maybe white can win. But technically, two engines would draw. I mean, I was thinking, okay, king d3 defends the b pawn. That's how tired I was. I, I, I don't have an explanation for this. I just... It's a stupid move. I should have gone king f5 and the game is over. I'm just gonna... I don't even know what to suggest. So, for example, king d4, rook e4 check, king c3, rook e5. We just clean up and, and they resign. I don't know. I can even play rook b5 here and, and win. In any case, I, I played king d3. My opponent took, I went king e4 and now luckily for me, he did not play rook b2. He was also short on time. We were both short on time. He played rook b4 check and I knew that I was winning and the only thing in my mind was don't blunder again, don't blunder again, look at the board, concentrate, take 20 seconds per move. Because now I play king f5 and I'm, I'm picking up all the pawns. What he should have done is rook b2 and now it's not clear at all because I'm going to lose the h2 pawn. Now I think this is just a draw. The engine says draw, maybe I can win but I doubt it. So he played rook b4 check and now it's completely busted and I'm happy to say I didn't make another mistake. Uh, rook a4, king g6, rook a2, takes, 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 a4, f4 and now it's just a matter of time before he resigns. Of course I, I don't want to take the rook because we may be drawing although I doubt it. No yeah it's a draw, it's a draw. So here, here, and now I have to go rook a1 because rook b1 is threatened. And after this, it's very simple. I just push my pawns, uh, king g6. I took on a2. If rook takes, then the pawn queens. Rook f4, g5, king e7, rook a7, king f8. Uh, and this was the final move of the game. Here, my opponent finally resigned. And I messed up two winning positions. And luckily for me, I didn't mess up the third. It, it was a tough game because of how tired I was. A very tough game. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. And yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.